welcome to the South Florida Bloggers. So for those of you attending the South Florida Bloggers Meetup for the first time, what are the South Florida Bloggers? Does anybody know? <laughs> okay. Oh. We're a community of bloggers, yay! That support each other through kind collaboration. And what does that mean? That means that we are bloggers that help each other instead of seeing each other as competition. And let me tell you, I am so proud of all of you guys because month after month, if you come and show up on a Saturday to learn about blogging and to keep improving and having more knowledge, and that's what's going to be the key to your success. So I'm very proud of you. And if you want to give you guys a hand, <laughs> you deserve it. Um, and alrighty, so if we want to kick off on a positive note, I would like to have maybe a few of you share a recent win. Something really cool that happened to you that you'd like to share with everyone? Anybody? I'll, 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 you, ooh, one over there. Okay, uh, I can share. So, I'm not the blogger, I'm the photographer for the blog, but I'm very proud of Noyemi from noyemi.co um, because we recently got reached out to by a brand um, to collaborate with them. So, we're pretty pumped about that. It's the first one of many, hopefully. That is amazing. Congratulations. I love getting to talk to different people, uh, it makes it so much easier. Um, anybody else want to share anything? That was awesome. Okay, I have a win to share. I was interviewed on the radio this week. <laughs> and I have been so proud. I keep telling everybody I need to start <laughs> stopping with that, but okay. Um, all right. So today we're going to be talking about photography. And in our industry, it's so visual. It's super important to take very engaging photos. Um, because there's so much content out on the internet that we want to do something that is just so sticky that it will stand out in all of the internet and people will be like, hey, what's this? I want to find out more. And that's how you grow your audience. So today we're going to learn some tips about photography and then once we're done, we're going to have a food demonstration when we're going to eat some yummy ceviche and a salmon salad. So stay tuned for that. Alrighty, let's see what else. Alright, so uh, our end hashtags are three hashtags. If you could please tag us in any social media that you have. I also love using hashtags to meet people that I do get to meet face to face at events. Um, I usually reach out to people and set up a coffee meeting. Uh, so you can use SFL bloggers. The Blogger Union and Kind Collaboration. That's my favorite tag. And we also have a fancy Snapchat filter. It's going. It uh, works inside of Macy's, and it's only going to work until 3 p.m. So get all your snaps in before our little filter runs out. Oh, it's a little late to introduce myself. Okay. <laughs> so my name is Paula Mendes. I'm the founder of the South Florida Bloggers and the Blogger Union. I also run a blog called Pro Gables Love that talks all about Pro Gables. But most importantly, I'm a resource for all of you guys. I want you all to be successful. So if I can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And also, um, this community is your community. The South Florida Bloggers exist because of each and one of you. So if you have topics you want to learn about or just feedback or ideas, please please, please send me an email, info at the softwareofloggers.com. Okay, finally, let's get started. Let me introduce you to our speaker today. Have it here, give me one second. All right, so she is a photojournalist. She was a photojournalist for the Palm Beach Post, and she shoots regularly for local chefs and for Boca Magazine, the Palm Beach Post, Food and Farm, and Palm Beach Illustrated. Please give a warm welcome to Libby Volge. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me here today. It is such a pleasure to be here, and I'm 
on the other side of the camera, so being in front of all this well-dressed and beautiful people is a little bit intimidating, so <laughs> be nice to me today. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about food photography, and I think this is something that is relevant, I hope, to most of you. So just so I can know my audience a little bit, um, who here currently has an active blog? Raise your hands up high. Be proud of us. Okay, great. Um, how about, are you blogging about fashion? Where, where are my fashion bloggers? Beautiful. How about, where are my food bloggers? Let me see my people. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Okay, how about health and fitness? <laughs> beautiful. Okay, great. Anything, anything else that I'm missing? Travel. Travel. Cars. Cars. Taking care of your parts. Taking care of your parts. Anything else? Real estate. Real estate. I love it. This is amazing. Okay, now for the most important question. Who here on a weekly basis is photographing their food for their blog? Daily. <laughs> Daily. I like this girl. Okay, so everyone else who doesn't photograph their food at all that is just here for the ceviche, just get through the next 20 minutes with <laughs> all of you right here. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Libby Volchies. I'm the owner and founder of Libby Vision. It's a food photography studio based in West Palm Beach and servicing all of South Florida. I founded it four years ago after leaving the Palm Beach Post, where I was a photojournalist for seven years. Now that is important to me because I am interested in not just photographing your food, but I'm interested in telling food stories. Now, how is that different than just a picture of a you know, plate in a ditch? I want to create a mood and a story and a narrative surrounding your food. And you're going to keep hearing this throughout the next 20 minutes. And I want to help you do that as well. I want to elicit a narrative surrounding your food. In addition, I'm a big advocate for the farms. Eating locally, eating seasonally, I think it's important. And I'm addicted to coffee. Okay, let's get started. Now when I think about food photography, I think that we have three ultimate goals. The first, maybe the most important, is creating a photograph that is drool-worthy, that is delicious. We use the word food corn a lot in our industry, and there's something to be said for that. When you look at the image, you want to kind of be salivating a little bit. Second of all, it should be storytelling. Is it a morning shot? Is it evening? Is it seductive? Are you enjoying it with someone else? Is it your coffee shot? Um, what can you tell about the image or the chef or the dish beyond just its food on a plate? And third, we are selling something. Everyone in this room is selling something. You could be selling your blog to advertisers, to the person who reached out for the collaboration. I'm selling a product with what I do. I work with chefs. We're selling them, you know, the ceviche dish to come in and try this. Selling uh, baked goods fast food, things like that. It could be a recipe for the, the food bloggers in this group. I created this recipe. Come and try it. Trust me with this photo that it is good to eat. But ultimately, everyone in here, we are selling our reputation. We are saying that we are a source, that we can be trusted, that our photograph reflects the knowledge that we have created, and that you can trust us. And I think that's really important. And bonus points if you can elicit an emotional response. We'll get to that later. Going back to the first thing, ask yourself, is the photo delicious? Okay, I started chatting with these three lovely ladies before we got started a little bit. And this is the point where I kind of say, get off my grass a little bit. And just bear with me, and then we're going to get into looking at photos. So hang on one second. Okay, so I know that we're like in the fast-paced world of social media where we have this urge to say like, I was here, I was at this restaurant, I got invited to this media dinner, I went out, I consumed a lot of food, I had this latte, I made this extravagant dish, look at it. And I understand that, and it's very, very easy to get swept away and get caught up in this. What, this is my get off the grass speech, I caution you to analyze your photos before you post them to stop for a minute, stop for a beat, and really look at it and say, is it delicious? Do you want to eat it? Do you have to eat it? If you invited the chef to sit next to you and show him your picture that you just took, would you be really proud to show him? 
And I, you know, I teach workshops in addition to everything else that I do. And I got started teaching workshops because I was, you know, spending a lot of time on Instagram and looking at a lot of blogs. And I saw that so many bloggers had this passion, this raw passion for what they do. And I, I love the passion, but they might not necessarily have the visuals to go along with it. And they like spend all this time crafting like these beautiful sentences, and they nailed the description every single time. And I was amazed by the words and the description and the elements and how they crafted it. And then I would look at the picture, and it would be like of a restaurant that I might represent or a chef that I knew really well. And I'd look at the picture, and I was just horrified. And it would be like, oh, Chef Aaron is serving cat vomit on a plate. And it was a really rough experience for me as the food photographer representing the restaurant as a personal friend of the chef to see that the photo really didn't represent the chef. And it was heartbreaking for everyone involved and I know it was probably heartbreaking for the blogger as well. And so that's kind of why I'm here today is to trying to help everyone to elevate their imagery. And I know that you know you guys get invited to so many things and you make a point to go out to so many things and I think that's amazing. But maybe rather than posting like 10 photos from the same restaurant where maybe nine of them don't look that great, maybe like just stop a minute and ask yourself, really, really honestly ask yourself, do you want to eat it? Like must you have that food looking at the image? Does the food look good? Does it really, really look good? Is it flattering? Is it flattering to the restaurant? Is it flattering to the chef? Is it flattering to your Instagram feed? Is it flattering to your blog? Does it make potential advertisers want to contact you to photograph for them? Does it showcase the chef and the restaurant well? Is it flattering? Is it really, really flattering? You know, we spend so much time analyzing the pictures of ourselves, and I, I admit it too, of course. You know, like, do I look fat? Does my face look good? Is my outfit on fleek? Can we turn that same attention on the food that we photograph? So that's when I get off the grass speech. Now let's get into actually creating better imagery. You can't be a good food photographer unless you're a good photographer. So good photography 101. A good photo should be in focus, non-negotiable. If it's not in focus, you can't post it. It should be properly exposed. And what I mean by that is it's not too light and it's not too dark. And if you do take a photo that is maybe a little bit too dark, you have editing software where you can correct that. It might be in Lightroom or Photoshop. You know, I see my DSLR girls out there. It might be, you know, just an Instagram or in Camera Plus or Snapseed. But educating yourself and learning how to use that software can elevate your imagery as well. It should be clean, and I mean two things by this. I mean, number one, when you look at the plate that you've taken, the plate should be clean. If you're ever in a kitchen, you will see them clean each plate with a towel before the dish goes out. So the plate itself should be clean, unless you're going for a purposefully messy look. And number two, the overall scene should be clean. It should be deliberate. Everything in there, you should have put in there by in purpose. And if it's not, take it out. There shouldn't be a stray fork on the corner of the frame. Um, they did analysis of how photographers view images versus how regular people view images. Like, literally just an image. And a regular person, like, goes like this. And a photographer, if you show them the image of the chef, their eyes go like, and I think that's really interesting, not just because I'm a photographer, but when you're taking a picture, rather than just like, oh, boom, I want you to go like this. And analyze it constantly. You're not in your head. You do that. <laughs> so analyze it a few times. Make a few sweeps with your eyeball before you actually take the picture. And bonus points if you can actually tell the story with the frame. Let's look at some photos. So this is my favorite photo for talking about, like, this is a good photo and a good food photo. So it's properly exposed. It's not too light and it's not too dark. It's clean. So yes, it's covered in blood, but that's kind of the whole point of it. It's in focus. It's balanced. So yes, we have a bunch of fish heads up here, and then it's balanced out down here by the one little fish head down here. And then it's telling a story. It's also shot in beautiful light. So the number one, you're gonna hear me say this the whole time, the number one thing all of you can do to improve your photos is to work in beautiful light. So I was working in a restaurant in South Beach, the fish delivery for the day, plopped it down in the middle of the restaurant. I recognized that this was beautiful. I took it over to the window, photographed 50 frames until the chef took it away from me. But this is like working in beautiful light and working compositionally and kind of mastering the basics of photography. So this is a very
very, very different photo, but it is also the, all the elements I was talking about. It is a dark photo, but it is properly exposed. I know it looks really dark, it looks dark on the screen, even darker, but it's not too dark, it's just my style. It tells a story. It's shot in beautiful window light. The window is bright here, so you can see the light coming in and hitting the pears. It's purposeful. I can't tell you how many times I placed that pear up and how that was the perfect pear for me to find. You can see the little leaf right here. There's like one pear with a leaf on it, but that was my pear. And so the purposefulness of it, and like the purposefulness of the pears in that bowl, and you can't see it because of the shadow, you know, the screen is really dark, but there's a base right there. You can kind of see, if the lights are off, you can see the flowers. So it tells a story, the purposefulness of it all. And the same thing with this one too. Um, kind of one of the hallmarks of my photography is a messiness. Um, so you could say like, oh, it's not clean, but like, that's kind of the whole point of it. Any questions so far? Okay, good, we're rolling along. I'm gonna give you three tips to elevate your food photography at home. Do you guys shoot a lot of food at home? Yes, good. Okay, number one, find interesting surfaces to shoot on. It took me a long time to figure this out. I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you that. <laughs> if you spend a lot of time looking at blogs online, you would think that every food photographer has this kind of marble and beautiful light coming into their kitchen. It's a complete lie. I have really dark, ugly granite and no window light in my kitchen. But I do have this beautiful, like, two by three marble slab that I handle spun to the edge, and I, it's like 80 pounds, and I carry it around. This is a, a cloth of denim that I bought at Joann's, um, and it was like 10 bucks, and I have a whole bunch of different cloths that I bought at Joann's for different photo shoots and they're interesting surfaces. I'm also a big fan of incorporating greenery into my photo shoots. This and then of course, this is very, very popular, the fake wood tabletop. Mine is about two by three. I had my handyman build it. He ripped the fence off of his backyard because I wanted it to look faded and rustic. I love my handyman, he's not for sale. Um, and after sitting in my car for a few days on photo shoots, it got warped by the Florida sun, and so we had to like start over and do the same thing over. Um, but these are very mobile. You can, well, I take them on photo shoots. You guys might not have to. But what I'm getting to is I have a lot of different surfaces that I can photograph on and kind of give you some visual variety. You don't necessarily need that if you find one surface that works for you that isn't your kitchen counter of like, like my gross granite kitchen counter. Um, the rustic wood is very, very popular. There's a few sites on Etsy that sell like, they're kind of vinyl and they fold up. I can't remember the name of them. I've used them, they're okay. They don't really work for me, but they might work for you guys. They're called like, um, I don't remember what it is in San Diego Paolo. Okay, so that's the first tip. Number two, find interesting props to kind of tell your story. So going back to this picture, so we have the wood tabletop, and then you have all of the things behind it. You have the salt pouring out of the bowl, you have the, the milk jar, you have the cilantro or whatever herb I use, you have the linens. And all of those kind of work together to create this story. Now props can help kind of add storytelling elements into pictures. And I really like to size down when I work with props. So if you have the choice between a salad plate and a dinner plate, always go for the salad plate. Um, they just kind of fit with food a little bit better. Like pinch pots, really small bowls, like even silverware. If you've noticed like the trend for restaurants to serve really big like utensils, I hate that. I really like, I bring my own silverware to photo shoots. I use really, really small silverware. Um, I'm talking about like linens and napkins. I like linen cloths a lot. They really break up the scene. Um, jars, I troll eBay and Etsy a lot. Um, and just like your fashion sense, I find that prop sense really changes and evolves with you as a photographer. So when I started my business four years ago, I was just buying everything because I thought I needed that. And uh, about eight months ago, I kind of muted through my prop closet and was getting rid of a ton of stuff that didn't really speak to me. And I really do find a lot of similarities with your fashion sense and your prop sense. You're gonna go through stages. And now I'm at the point where I invest in quality pieces that are super expensive and it's ridiculous, but like I don't buy anything unless it really, really, really speaks to me. 
So now, like in my prop closet, I have like grays and blacks and blues, like lots of colors of the sea, and I'm buying like, you know, plates that are $40 that are hand thrown, and I'm just investing in quality things that I really love. Um, you're gonna kind of figure out what makes sense for you and your brand. So this is for a, a story for Thanksgiving on cornbread. And obviously that's the star of the show, the cornbread, but bringing in the deconstructed elements of the scene help tell more of the story as well as the linens. And my favorite part about this picture is the acorns kind of thrown around. Being a Thanksgiving story for a magazine we photographed it in August, my mom FedEx acorns down. <laughs> it was super expensive. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be food related. So, giant string of beads kind of works. The thing on the right bottom, pink, I don't know, it's my stylist brought this over to the house. It's like this giant pink, pink fan, but it works. I don't know. Um, so, this was shot on marble. It was for a commercial bakery with the story was on the pinwheels, obviously. And then we just kind of threw in like the vintage elements. And they should, you know, it should make sense. Like, if I always ask my clients to think of the branding words that represent them, and they are surprised by this. Uh, it, it gets me. I'm like, you don't know, you know, what, what represents you. You don't know if you're modern or if you're vintage or if you're clean or if you're organic. And I feel like all of you should know those words too for your brand. And so I'm always interested that clients haven't thought about this. Um, but uh, thinking about like vintage, you know, going through, this is a very vintage scene, you know, it's light and it's bright and it's, it's not modern at all. Um, but all of those elements should work together. So this obviously requires a lot of experimentation with prop placement. Um, so being deliberate and careful, don't, you know, don't be afraid to break the rules. Like some of my favorite pictures are things that we just kind of throw around and it actually works. But it's an investment of your time as well, and I understand that. Okay, so like I was saying, the number one thing you can do if you remember nothing else from this, photographing good light. And for me, that always means photographing near a window. Um, I tell people to go on a light hunt in their house, especially if you're photographing a lot in your house. So like, fill a basket with fresh beets and take it throughout every room in your house. You put it by the window and take a picture and make sure you know what to switch and then see where you like the light the best. East light is gonna be different from south light, different than north light. Um, and it might change through the seasons as well and so just see where you like it. I like to show this picture because it is such an easy photo to take. Everyone in this room could do it. It's natural light, it's a black background, fresh vegetables. And this is a little heavily more cropped, but it's the same thing. It's a plate of sprouts in natural light. Um, I have a friend who's a caterer and I was at his place one day and I noticed this light coming in. And it is like, the sickest, craziest light I'd seen, and I was so excited by it. And if he didn't live like 45 minutes away, I'd be at his place all the time. But this is like a very, very simple picture. It's a macro lens, just getting very close up, just photographing a beautiful light. So you can see the difference between this picture and like the heavily cropped pictures. I think this picture is beautiful. I'm happy that I photographed it. I'm happy for him that I photographed it because he has this for his collateral. But to me, this doesn't do anything for me. This is, a, this is a nice product photo. I did my job well, but it doesn't elicit an emotional response. Whereas the photographs I was showing you with the heavy props and the beautiful, you know, those to me have an emotional response. And even this one, you know, even though it's, it's a little bit more straight on, this has an emotional response. You know, you have the curve of the cast iron skillet, you know it is like taken mid, you know, mid cooking. So there's more storytelling involved. Like, I feel something when I look at this. And I think for me, that's always the ultimate goal in photography, whether it was working as a newspaper, you know, I do landscape photography when I go on vacation, I don't photograph my food. You know, I always am looking for that emotional connection, that emotional response. Okay, I know this is what a lot of you guys want to talk about because this is what's hard. <laughs> um, so number one, if you go out to dinner with me at eight o'clock at night, you won't see me take out my phone. It just doesn't happen. And it's funny because everyone else will and I'm just sitting there, can we eat now? Um, I'm very protective of my brand and I'm very protective of 
living vision and preserving my Instagram account. And I, I don't take pictures where I know I'm not going to be successful. So going out to eat at 8 o'clock at night in the middle of a dark restaurant, I'm not going to take pictures. I'm not going to be taking a quality photograph like that. If I can take all my lights, set up a photo shoot in the middle of a restaurant, sure, I can make something out of that. But it's going to be really hard in that situation. So tips for taking at a restaurant. Go at lunchtime. If you're writing about a restaurant and it's open at lunch, why would you? You're going to have a hundred times better photos. Go at, go at lunch. Order, you know, sit next to the window. Order whatever you want. You would be, just try it once for me. Just try the difference between going at lunch and dinner and see what the result is. But if you are going to a media dinner and you have to go at night and you have to get something out of that, um, my biggest suggestion is learning how to manipulate your camera and learning how to really, really use it. Um, so you can control exposure within the iPhone. I assume everyone here knows how to do that. Um, I highly recommend turning off your flash. There is very, very few instances, unless you have a DSLR and an external flash and can bounce it off the wall or bounce it off the ceiling and slow the shutter down, you know, then we're talking about situations where you can create some photos in that scenario. You can also have someone else turn on the flashlight on their iPhone and give you a little bit of light. So that's one situation that you can, you know, one scenario you can work with. Um, if I'm a big fan of like overheads, you know, kind of I call them like flat lays. So if you have to kind of take photos, like kind of setting up the scene overhead and kind of working that angle. So, you know, this kind of goes by all those philosophies I was saying. Go at lunchtime, find an interesting surface, go by the window. Um, oh, the other quick tip, I didn't write this down anywhere, but work in odd numbers. Rather, like, rather than twos and fours, go one, three, fives. It just makes everything look better, trust me on this. So like, this is what I kind of call the flat lays. There's actually, if you follow like, at Flatlay on Instagram, they do like, really good jobs with like, design elements. Um, so this isn't a great example of it, but I want you to kind of imagine if you had a person seated in front of each plate and then bring in their hands, and then, you, then you're telling the story. Now, I know this is shot in a really beautiful light because I want at lunchtime, but even if this was shot in a really dark scenario, you'd be telling the story and you'd be creating a photograph even if you're at a restaurant in the nighttime. So that's one thing that you guys can do. Um, so this, I think you guys would probably know all of this. I highly recommend post-processing software, whether you use Visco, I like the S2 filter on Visco. Um, I don't like to go crazy on my filters, by the way. Um, Camera Plus has good editing software, or even like within Instagram. I was already surprised by the number of people who don't edit within Instagram. Like you should be drilling down within Instagram. You should be working the brightness and bringing up the shadows and sharpening the heck out of that because every time you go into Instagram, um, whether you're taking it from Dropbox or whatever, it, the sharpness degrades and you should be adjusting those images, like learning how to adjust those images within Instagram. And I can give you my formula, but I don't know, like it changes for everyone. So you should spend like, you know, three minutes on each image, like really working the the settings within that, your image quality will improve greatly, and you'll see an instant uh, instant effect within that. Um, and lastly, one of my favorite things to say is zoom with your feet. So I'm going to stand in front of So if I want to like, take a picture of you rather than zooming here, like this is basic photography, like zoom with your feet. <laughs> I, I had a boss who used to yell at us about that all the time. Rather, even like even with your DSLR, like don't necessarily zoom with the zoom function, but you literally walk with your feet. Like it'll improve your photography in general. And then going back to like, I know it can get super technical and super overwhelming. But, like the ultimate goal of every photograph we take, like we want to elicit an emotional response from our viewer. So try to make them feel something by your photograph. And it sounds really corny, and I'm probably going to regret saying this, but uh, I know I've taken a good photograph, and like my heart kind of skips a beat when I'm when I'm in it, when I'm like concentrating for an afternoon, and I'm like trying really really hard to get a great photograph of those berries, and like like my heart just jumps a little bit, and I feel like exhausted afterwards. So like I know I've done something well then, and like I hope you guys can feel that too a little bit, and I hope you can like 
just kind of dive into like the world of pin photography and like give yourself over to it a little bit because it will love you right back. Um, like I said, I do workshops. My next workshop is next Sunday up in Lake Worth, and that's kind of a drive, but if you'd like to come, we're gonna do this for two hours straight. We're gonna be hands-on working together. We're gonna be styling together. It's gonna be pretty epic. There's more information at livingvision.com slash workshop. And what questions do you have for me? Do you have time for questions? Okay, questions, let's go. Yes. I use a Canon 5D SR, and it's specifically made for working in the studio. So you can't get too high of an ISO. Um, so I keep it to a low ISO, and it's like a 50 meg file. I just got started, uh, when I started my own business, I bought the 7D, Canon 7D. Love it, it's a great camera. It's not full frame, but it's very good. Okay, because I have that one, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> There's workshops that teach you how to use your DSLR. It is a solid little camera. You can boost the ISO. That's the other thing about working in restaurants. You can boost the ISO in good quality cameras up to 1600, and that'll give you a little bit more light. The cheaper cameras, you can't boost the ISO that much because the image quality will degrade. But that one you can. It's a good little camera. Yes. Hi, uh, Alejandro from Watch Miami. Um, I saw that you had the, the lettuce picture. You had a black background. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had experience with shooting uh, some product inside a light box with a black background. But the black background I'm using absorbs a lot of the things uh, and a lot of time. So, do you have any recommendations for that? And the second question related to that is I saw you using. All right, cool. <laughs> First of all, I hate the light box. I don't use it at all. I had like one experience with it, and the client never paid me, so I didn't recommend that. <laughs> um, it does absorb a lot of light. You're going to have to overcompensate. You're going to have to bounce more into it. So, you notice you've worked with the light box before. When you didn't have a black background, you had better success. Perfect. You're going to have to give more light to it. Or, what I would do, get rid of the light box, take your black background, take it the black background over to the window, set up a bounce pad on the other side, you'll be fine. Second question, I saw you using an actual marble slab, but um, I saw, uh, I've seen some photographers that are carrying the slab to a restaurant, they actually get marble paper, it's like a, yeah, like a thick paper that looks like marble, so you just set it up. Uh, I haven't bought it yet because I've heard mixed reviews. Yes, uh, really the reviews. Really the reviews? Okay, so, no, so it's better to get like an actual slab marble. Okay. Because I've, like, I've done that, you know, with the, the paper that you roll up and everything, and like, Mixed reviews and weren't super happy with it, and I don't use it anymore. So. Trust people. <laughs> what about what about if you want to uh, take a vertical picture, of, for example, of this bottle of water? Uh, how to avoid to have a bad background and to focus just on the product? Um, okay, so what you can do is you can take an actual piece, like of some sort of blackness behind it, if you just want to focus on that. And in the beginning of my photography, I was doing that a lot. So I bought like two by two boards, uh, two by two, they're like this. So I bought them from Home Depot for like $7, and you can paint them black, and you set it up behind it. And you can buy two, and buy little L clamps, and then shove them behind it, so it kind of sits behind there. And that works as kind of like an instant backdrop behind it, and then it'll shut out the light behind it as well. So that's a really easy, really, really cheap way to do it. And then you can also flip it down and put it down and put it on top of it. And then if it gets to go black, you paint over it. And you have both sides to paint on too. Super easy. Who else? What else? Um, I do have a question. I'm on vacation right now. Okay. So in terms of captioning, when do you feel it's appropriate to use a uh, informative caption on a product versus a storytelling caption? Where are you publishing? I'm sorry? Where are you publishing? No. Apparel. It's not. It's not. Are you, like, what's where you're capturing? Instagram? Instagram, Instagram. Okay. So what is your purpose? Apparel. Okay. Apparel? Yes. But, like, are you trying to attract advertisers? Just for personal? No, it's just for my personal followers and my friends. Um, I think it's I mean, I think you guys are all better resources than me on this. Yeah. It depends on what your goal is. You know, I can't start a balance between casual and professional, so I, I 
have casual captions, but if it's a, if it's a client's photo, I'm super professional about it. So if you're trying to attract clients, if you're trying to attract you know, investors, I feel more professional, but if it's just your, your personal Instagram, you can be more casual. But I mean, I always think you're better suited to answer that. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. What was the use for your Instagram photo again? What were you, you is it part of just your blog? Or, uh, or are you trying to sell apparel? You're trying to sell apparel? Oh, okay. Then uh, it should be more conversational. Trying to give kind of the feeling of what. Get someone re reading the caption, kind of get an idea of what it feels like to wear your apparel. So definitely more storytelling. And maybe even more having a conversation with someone of how, like, what would they like to wear this apparel to or something like that. So either storytelling or conversational and something engaging with your audience. Switch gears and we 
uh, Chef Miguel is going to be doing some demonstrations for us. Uh, and if you guys are sitting in the back, you can go ahead and move forward. And we're going to switch gears in a little bit. So let's just all relocate. 